the singer is actually Australian. I had no idea because she often sings in uh. different languages. And her family are Italian, so that's why she is uh, multilingual in lots of European languages, not just Italian. And also, I have heard her before, but I didn't realize how good she was until recently. Her name is so fun that I was like, I don't know, I just dismissed her as a pop singer who wasn't great. And that was a major error on my part, I have to admit. So let's listen. Wow, there's a huge choir. So this is, of course, an Andrew Lloyd Webber song and Tim Rice for uh, a Vita the Musical. So beautiful. I can't believe that choir is so massive. Interesting. You won't believe me. All you see is a girl who wants you, although she's dressed up to the nines. That sixes and sevens with you. It's so unusual for me because I'm really used to a musical theatre voice singing this and I can tell that she isn't necessarily, although I don't know if she's done musical theatre or not, but she's a pop voice in a musical theatre uh, style. So instead of it going to a slightly more classical place, she's keeping it in a very pop place, especially up into those higher ranges, allowing things like it breathiness to come through, which is often something that you don't hear in musical theatre and a bit less vibrato as well. but. It's beautiful in its own way, it's very, very unique, and it feels very, very natural and emotional. I had to let it happen, I had to Ooh, change, I like that. couldn't stay yes. all my life down in here, looking out of the window, staying out. Okay, she's warming into this. I like it. So there she's moving into that musical theatre sound a bit. So that's kind of interesting. It's like, here I am. This is my voice. Okay, now I'm going to show you that I'm versatile. I like that. That was kind of cool. I like the freedom with the vibrato all the way through. Very empty. It gives it a touch of that. I had... I love that slide in, it gave it like a, um, like a really emotional cry feeling there. I think it's just 2,000 voices actually. So this song is deceptively difficult. It sits above the break of a woman, so it's up into the head voice, but over that little tricky spot where the registers kind of uh, mold and join. So, don't cry for me, Argentina. 
where do you switch? It takes a little bit of practice for anyone playing this role. It's notoriously tricky. It's a sort of song that also, uh, you know, that's a part of the voice that likes to uh, head off on its own way when you're feeling a bit fatigued. And remember, like, a lot of empty performers are doing eight shows a week, so you do get fatigued. Um, it's tricky, and she is doing it with perfection. The way that she's flipping between head voice and a mix to add effect, it's not just when she has to, it's kind of, it's more than that. I can hear that she's kind of um, finding artistic nuance within it, which is really, really beautiful. I love some of this breathiness, which is a little bit unusual for it, how that's coming through, but it's really emotional. I really love the emotion in it as well. Dance for fortune. Emotional. <laughs> Argentina. I love the choir as well. Choirs just get me. There's nothing better. It's just humanity, right? Don't cry for me, Argentina. The truth is, I never left you. All through my wild days, my mad existence, I keep my promise. Don't keep your distance. Have I said too much? There's nothing more I can think of to say to you. But all you have to do is look at me to know that everyone. I'm loving all the things in this. But all you have to do, there's a lot of cry going on, which is making it really emotional. Sob, technically. Cry um, as a sound is, mm, uh, uh, so the sound of crying. But if you kind of tense up, sob is a bit more of a, a weighty sound. Oh, like think of it like, oh, no, you have to do. It's actually a little bit healthier for your voice. Cry can cause a bit of tension and things like that, which then can sneak on into like the next phrase or something you might get a bit of tongue tension with it sob tends to be a little bit more relaxed and soft and she's using that quite a lot to to get that and so i love it what is true? Uh, master vibrato there what no vibrato is true putting the vibrato on the end with a crescendo. It, each, that vibrato gives such a different texture whether you have it the whole way through the note or straight, so each note has a different kind of treatment to give it its own special zing. <laughs> An expressive, well, there's a lot of people, I suppose, who needs to be expressive. Conductor. How do you feel that when everyone sings together? So 
beautiful. This was all at the same time. I loved that as well. It's the choir master's bane. <laughs> Imagine getting 2,000 people to sing like that together. That is just absolutely fantastic. Um, I actually was part of a choir like that once um, for the Queen Mother's birthday back in the day when I was a kid and I really, really remember it because they had choirs from all around the world singing at this. And I remember things like that, like we were drilled into us, like you must all be together. And it's really important because there's nothing worse than the end of the song. Don't make, keep your distance. <laughs> and a little splatter, so that's really lovely. Um, her voice was incredible. I loved how she moved into it, how emotional she got. It was beautiful and versatile and I loved it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please do like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye. -bye.